welcome back to our twisting taiga zoo we are working on the doll sheep habitat um it's this was an interesting one because i didn't i don't know much about the doll sheep realistically they look a little bit like a goat. <laughs> um, I mean, obviously, they're in the same... Whatever. Um, ignore me. <laughs> uh, so, I had an idea, like... Because, obviously, I, I pre-built this mountain. This wonderful mountain terrain, right? Um... And I don't... The hard part is, is when I had built it, I had one idea. And then, like, as I've been building habitats and stuff as we've been going, like, it evolves into its own different ideas as we go, right? And then trying to finagle how stuff fits and, like, where staff buildings and power buildings and water treatment buildings can go and guest facilities. It's all just... It's all just a mess. And quite honestly, like, realistically, you would never want to navigate the zoo as a staff person. Like, you would barely want to navigate the zoo as a person. I just, it's a little bit of a mess. But I did overall like how this habitat came together. Um... I didn't do a whole lot with the null barriers this time. I was kind of a little... I was still kind of annoyed from... <laughs> the logs not working in previous habitats and having to go back and fix them. And I was a little annoyed with... Just all of it in general and the null barriers. So I was like, I'll put the... I think I ended up with the wooden... Logs barrier um just because of how uh, they uh, work um or how the doll sheep requirements are like wood was fine with them so i was like you know what i'll just do that and i will worry about because <gasps> it's easy to hide the wood barriers right like we can put rocks and stuff over the barriers um and it's easier to see where they were because like the snow leopards and what the no barriers are doing with the snow leopards it was just it was all very <laughs> annoying um but i really like i was gonna put the staff gate there and like it was just it's a hot mess it's a hot mess right just with how everything worked out. It was fine. But then, like, I didn't realize initially, like, the door's not there. Like, I went to do the pathing, and, like, I realized the door wasn't there. And I was like, oh, where's the door? <laughs> um, it was just... And I absolutely love the staff setup that I have, right? Which is why I saved it as a blueprint and it's why I continue using it. It's because I do love it, but it doesn't like to work with different terrains. Like, obviously, I don't have flat terrain everywhere and they don't like it the pads don't like it it was very it was being very finicky with me this time around i was unhappy with its choices <laughs> i was like why um the pathing in this game is going to drive me absolutely bonkers it's gonna drive me absolutely bonkers. Cause then I put a path there and I lined it up and it was like, oh yeah, no, we're, we're happy as a clam. Like, yeah, this is exactly where we wanna be. And then I was trying to line it up to this freaking path and I was just like, the, ah! 
What do you mean the door's down there? <laughs> it's just like, I don't understand. I don't understand. And so again, I was like, do it from the path. It likes to do it from the path, apparently. It doesn't like to do it just all willy-nilly out in the open. I don't know. I don't know. And then I was like, oh, well, I'll just, you know, sneak a path in here. I did not sneak a path in here. I didn't. It didn't. It wasn't. No. Uh-uh. Wasn't going to work. It said no. There is no conceivable space here for a path, you crazy, crazy, crazy person. So I was like, all right, I'll just put a path over over down the side of a cliff, I guess. These poor, poor staff people. I feel so bad. Like, what is wrong with me? Why did I think this was an acceptable... Why did I think this was an acceptable place for a path? Like, this is... It's absolute chaos. Like, the pathing in this zoo is absolute chaos. Like, I have not actually built the next habitat from when I am recording this because I don't know how to do the middle section. And I might just skip over the middle section and just call it a day. And then this path was, like I said, these pathings are, I, I don't even know. I don't even know. Like, I just, it's, it's, it is what it is, obviously, but like, I'm sorry, virtual zookeepers. I really am. I really, really am. It's just, you know, me doing me things. And I was like, well, maybe I can connect it over here. And then I got like four things and I was like, nah, not worth, not worth it in any way, shape or form. Um... But like I said, this habitat was not all headaches. The pathing was the headaches. Like the habitat itself was okay. Um, minus the part where, again, I ran into the struggle of like what was traversable for the sheepies and what was not traversable for the sheepies. Um, and the water has decided to just be the bane of my existence on the side of the mountain. We crossed over the tip of the mountain and it decided we are absolutely not going to cooperate with you. We are 100% going to give you a problem with every single puddle you want to make <laughs> like it was just there will be no more easy going with ponds and puddles and rivers and things there will be no more you have had your easy your easy water life it is time for a difficult water life that's how I felt about this um, so I was trying to be mindful of what they could and could not climb without ever really bearing witness to what they could and could not climb. So I was assuming they'd be able to climb up some rocky rocks. And they really, they, they really can't climb up the rocks. And I mean, part of it I designed so they wouldn't be able to traverse it. Um, but part of it I designed the, like if they traverse it, they traverse it. Like that's not a big issue. Um, <clears throat> but again, I ended up having to put a slope in and I'm wondering if it's just more about uh, like the mechanics of the game in general, like, oh, we're in a pit. So because it's just a straight pit, 
it automatically registers as non-traversable even with the rocks there like the rocks don't register as traversable because there's no terrain that they'd be able to traverse like that's the only thing i can really think of at this point like they can traverse the terrain if there is traversable terrain oh my gosh that sentence makes a ton of sense doesn't it <laughs> <laughs> That's the perfect sentence. Um, so that has like, so I'm, my thought was that they would be able to climb up those rocks and that would be pretty cool that they would be able to like dick around on those rocks and climb up and down and this and that and the other thing. But turns out they really couldn't. Um when I finally got them in there. And that's the hard part, like, when do you put <laughs> the animals in their habitat, right? Like, do you put them in as soon as you have barriers up, as soon as you have a staff gate, and so you can see, like, what's traversable, what's not, like, what's a good idea, what's a terrible idea, like, do you have the animals in there, or do you wait, like I did, and then you have to go back and fix it. Um, because, I mean, you can see, like, I wanted to give them... This actually ended up being a fairly large space. Um, most of the habitats in general have been fairly large. Um, like, there's some that seem smaller than others. And that's the hard part, too. Like, <sighs> this zoo, because of how I've designed it and how it's laid out, it's, it's difficult to kind of get a good perspective on how things how big things are like that snow leopard habitat is massive the red panda habitat is massive the llama habitat not that big uh pandas have a surprising amount of space um for most and black bears have a surprising amount of space. For most and black bears, I will say this quickly, are obnoxious. Uh, every time I've put them in a zoo and given them a climbing frame, they decide that, and I must just be the climbing frames because it's the default climbing frames. They just decide nobody else exists in the world and they get super stressed out and the people can see them and oh my god, people can see me and oh my god, nobody's around me and oh my god, I'm I'm by myself, I'm stressed out, I have no welfare. Like, it's just, it's super annoying. <laughs> like, every time. They're just, for most of black bears, are the most annoying animal in this zoo right now. I want to say. I want to say they might be the most annoying. <laughs> um, so then I was like, okay. Um, I initially, I had wanted to do what I had done with the other habitats where they like get to circle around. But ultimately it just ended up being similar to the llamas where they get like one little observation window like they don't even really get to climb over them at all or like it's just you get to look at them through the windows essentially um so then the sheepy was in the pen and i could like okay what do you got and i was like oh, that's not <sighs> and this is the annoying part like the animal knows that's part of its habitat like it knows but it has no way down there and i was like weird but okay because like it can go down that one little part of the rock but it couldn't go down the rest of the rock so i was like hmm weird but all right so i ended up putting a hill in for them <sighs> they get a hill <laughs> i'll delete some of my rocks i mean ultimately deleting my rocks is not a bad thing i have a lot of rocks there are so many rocks but, and actually the slope came out pretty nice too. Like, it did actually work out, ultimately. I just never think it's gonna look as good as it does. Um, 
this would have been so cool to see the climb on the rocks, but whatever. Here we are. Um, no, so it, it was okay. It was fine. It was fine, everything was fine. Um, but yeah, once, once they're in, like, they could run down it and he has a happy little camper. He had everything he needed and we built him a shelter and then I think the rest is just decorating the rest of the area, making sure there's power, um, making sure like the trees and stuff are in, like they don't need that much foliage. So, I mean, realistically, I think I pop a couple of trees around that hit the habitat, but they don't really get much foliage and then uh, it's just finishing off this little pathway for the guests um so yeah and there's obviously a few pictures at the end so thank you guys so so much for watching and i will see you in the next one bye guys